हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक सो जस्ट कंटिन्यूइंग व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर व्हाट वी हैव सीन इन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर जस्ट टू समराइज वी हैव सीन द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स रिलेटेड टू डिमांड व्हाट इज द डिमांड कर्व how do we classify the different kind of products what are the different market conditions so this we have seen in the previous lecture so in this lecture we will see what is supply and how this is being related to price on the similar lines what we have discussed for demand so demand is basically what from the demand is basically with from the perspective of end user or from the perspective of consumer so the general law of demand states that whenever there is a decrease in price there will be a high demand for that particular product now let me put a question before you say for example if i am the manufacturer of any product and if the price is higher in the market or lower in the market what my reaction is whether to supply less or whether to supply more so this question can be answered if we understand the term supply supply is basically the fundamental economic concept that describes the total amount of a specific good or service that is available to consumer demand is so okay i want a product but this product may be may be available in the market may not be available in the market. it depends upon the supply so the thing is being a manufacturer it's important for me to know that how much quantities for particular product i need to supply in the market at any given point of time so that is what we mean by supply or we can say that supply is the willingness and the ability of producers to create goods and services and to take them to the market ideally what the demand is ideally this should be supplied but depending upon the situation say for example if my plant capacity is not enough to supply what is being demanded then i may produce quantities which is less than what is being asked or if i am not fetching a proper price for my particular product i may not produce much quantities or rather i may wait for the proper time to flush my product into the market whenever there is a higher price for that particular item or product on the similar lines what we have discussed for demand there are certain factors on which the supply depends what are these these are price price of a particular product of course since i am being a manufacturer it is important for me to know how the prices for the raw materials are being if the raw material price is quite high i may not go for much rather i will wait for the time where i can get the same raw material at the same price of course technological aspect say for example crt versus led if i if i if my if i am foreseeing that the crt technology is obsolete led technology is coming into picture then there is no point in producing televisions based on crt technology expectations what the consumer wants in near future so i may wait for certain period of time before making my product readily available in the market because i know that over a period of time this will be the expectation from the consumer of course a lot more depend upon my competitors what they are doing. so sir sometimes we are just doing it because my competitor is doing the same so these are some of the factors on which the supply depends what is important here is the price so being a manufacturer if i say if i just leave all the other factors i only wants to manufacture product at that particular point of time that will fetch me more profit so that is the condition say for example at one point of time x profit is realized by selling 10 units 
another point of time this x profit is realized by selling 100 units so what i will prefer obviously i will prefer to generate this x profit just by selling this 10 number of units fine so supply depends upon what is the price of that commodity at which it is being sold in an open market we have seen the demand curve that is whenever the price falls down the demand of that commodity or the product decreases similar is the case with the supply curve rather in this case the supply is higher when the price is higher that is the difference between the supply curve and the demand curve so the supply curve is because our graphical representation of the relationship between product price and the quantity of product that a seller is willing and able to supply of course i will be supplying more number of units in the market if, it, if my plant is capable of producing that much quantities that will fetch me a higher profit and how higher profit is being generated if the same unit instead of fetching 10 rupees it is fetching 100 rupees from the market so that is a very simple explanation so if we just see unlike in the demand curve where we have the demand increasing whenever there is a fall in price for the supply curve the demand increases whenever there is an increase in the price and the demand falls whenever there is a decrease in the price so this is a typical supply curve we have the law of supply which states that the demand decreases whenever there is a higher price of that commodity and vice versa. On the similar lines, we have a law of supply. That means other factors being equal, competitors, technology, raw material, all these factors, we are not taking into consideration the quantity supplied of the good prices when the price of that good rises. So we have this kind of correlation, positive. That is, whenever there is a higher price of a particular product, more from a seller's point of view or from a manufacturer's point of view, I wish to supply more number of units in the market. The reason being that now I will be generating profit at much lower volume. Here is the pictorial representation. Increase in price will lead to increase in supply. Decrease in price will lead to decrease in supply. Obviously, the objective is higher profit at lower volume of productions. So that is what we mean by the law of supply. Now, if we you know the law of demand and the law of supply, let's see how generally we call this as a circular flow of economic activity. We have two conditions: one is output market. One is input markets. Output market means the products which are readily available. Output markets are the markets in which goods and services are exchanged. So this is basically where we are exchanging goods or services. So what is being input into this output market? We have firms. They are basically supplying the product to these output markets. And from these output markets, depending upon the demand, the household they are consuming these products or services similarly input from these households like labor raw material so these are basically the the, the supply the, the supply which is being input to these markets and based on this the input markets they compute the demand and basically this is being fed into the firm and with this input the firm basically manufactures something in the form of supply and this flow, circular flow is taking place. So here in input markets, it basically includes labor, capital, land, use, produce, raw materials, whatever is being required to produce or to produce that particular item. However, the, this is basically the flow of products, but the money flow the, the the payment flow in an opposite direction so payment flows like this so, so payment flows opposite direction as the physical flow of resources goods and services so payments will be will be flowing like this 
like from the output market to firm, from firm to input market, input to household, and household to output market, like this. So this is known as the circular flow of any economic activity. Now you have a supply curve and you have a demand curve. My question is: for these two curves, we have quantities on one axis and price on another axis. If we superimpose the, these two curves together, how the picture will look like? The picture will look like something like this. So we have a demand curve. Demand curve means the whenever the price falls, the quantity demanded or the demand the quantities will be, will have uh, will experience a higher demand. And whenever there is a price rise from the supply point of view, the quantity supplied will be increasing whenever higher price. So the thing is, how do the supply and the demand curve together determines the quantity and the price of goods sold? So if you just see this particular curve, there is one very interesting point where this supply and demand curve they both intersect. This is basically known as an equilibrium point. So an equilibrium point it can be defined where a supply and the demand curve they intersect each other. And the beauty of this particular point is that if we just see from the demand perspective, perspective and supply perspective, this is the point where we have supply is equal to demand. Whatever is being demanded that is being produced. So Equilibrium point is a situation where we have supply equals to demand, and for this equilibrium price, we have a price what we call as a equilibrium. A equilibrium price. Sometimes it is also called as a market clearing price, and this is the price at which the quantities demanded and supplied both are equal. What is the importance of this? This is an ideal curve, both from the end user point of view and from the supplier point of view. What, what, whatever number of quantities is being demanded by the end users that, that are being supplied by the manufacturer. So an important implication of this curve is what we call as the law of supply and demand. So what this law of supply and demand states that ideally when we are going to purchase any product from the market, its price should be such so that it should be said that the, that the price should be that one at which the supply and the demand both be equal. So ideally the cost of any particular product should be that cost or should be that price at which the supply and the demand both are equal. So ideally the cost of a commodity, product or item available in the market should be the price at which the demand and supply are equal. Are equal. That is, ideally a product should be available at equilibrium price. Right? So this is a very ideal situation. And this is the most important law of economics. Economics as far as economics is concerned. That is what we call as the law of supply. Now if you see here, on this particular curve, what we have, if, if I just extend this blue line horizontally, we have a region where we have less demand, excess supply for a particular price. So if price is 50, the demand is this, but the supply is higher. So this is the region what we call as where we are producing surplus quantities. Similarly, below this, Horizontal blue line, we have a condition. Say, for example, if I take this 10, then at this particular price, what is being demanded is higher than what is being supplied. So, this is the region, the region what we call as a shortage, shortage region. So, ideally, surplus is also detrimental and shortage is also detrimental. So surplus is det detrimental in the sense that if we have a surplus good available in the market, then the price will fall down because there are no takers for it. 
whatever is being demanded that is being fulfilled and excess good if it is lying in the warehouses unnecessary that will lose its value and that will be a loss to the manufacturer as far as shortage is concerned this is also detrimental because if we have a shortage then the consumer might switch over to a different alternative which is available before it if product x is shortage and and complementary uh, or we can say the equivalent product is there in the market then the consumer will switch over to that particular new product and unnecessary because of just shortage in demand we are losing our customers so the ideal point is that one should operate a business at this particular point that is the supply and the demand both are equal and the costing should be such so that it should be that particular cost where the supply and the demand be equal would fall as the equilibrium price so this is all about the supply curve and what will happen when we plot the supply and the demand curve on or we superimpose these other these two together and what is the equilibrium in our next lecture we will see some of the implications of this law of supply and demand we will explain some of the phenomena which we physically see happening around and we can we will try to explain these all these phenomena of price rise shortage of demand sorting with the help of these terms so hope you have enjoyed this second lecture on the basics of economics so thank you very much